Hell of a way to end 2021, Cobra Kai. That was worth the wait. Hot damn, this show is great. And it feels so good to be able to say that. When classic franchises are getting rebooted and revived right and left, with the results usually being not so hot, Cobra Kai is just continuing to raise the bar and show everybody how these things should be done. And it's hard to believe I'm saying this about a season that reintroduced the character I was probably the most concerned about in the entire Miyagi-verse. I haven't watched Karate Kid Part 3 since I was a kid, and the few bits I remember mostly involved Terry Silver acting like an evil cartoon character. Not my favorite villain of the series, so when we found out they were bringing him back, I was like... I don't know about this. Well, turns out I was worried over nothing. Because I'll be damned if Terry Silver isn't the best thing about season four, period. And honestly, the nostalgia factor has very little to do with that. The writers just do a fantastic job with him. And with a little bit of fine tuning, he quickly becomes the character that Karate Kid Part 3 wanted him to be and more. And all it took was getting him off cocaine. Unbelievable. So John Kreese calls up his old war buddy to help him in this karate war against Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fan. But to his surprise, Terry Silver has really turned his life around since the 80s, and his arc for the season is about him finding that villain inside him again, and maybe going a step further this time, becoming even more dangerous than he was back then. A lot more. In fact, one of the big revelations about Season 4 is that Terry Silver makes a more compelling villain than Kreese in a lot of ways. Not just because of how physically imposing he is on account of being a friggin' giant, but it wasn't until we had someone to compare him to that it became obvious how single-minded Kreese is. Kreese just wants to beat the other dojos, and sure, he can be ruthless about it, but his mentality is very thug-esque, and he's not thinking about very much beyond that. But then comes Terry Silver, who's got all these big plans about merchandising and franchising Cobra Kai and spanning out to multiple locations and all this other stuff, and he's also a lot more charismatic and cunning in how he manipulates people. Just the way he sinks his hooks into the other characters, getting under their skin and coercing them into doing what he wants without them even realizing it, this guy is just lapping everybody in the mind games department, and it's brilliant. It doesn't take long at all for Terry Silver to emerge as the much bigger threat, so much so that even Kree starts feeling uneasy about it, because all season Terry Silver is like this virus infecting everything he touches, from Daniel and Johnny's partnership to the Cobra Kai students to his own partnership with Kreese, to the point where Kreese actually has second thoughts about what he's gotten himself into with this guy. And it all builds to a big status quo shakeup that I kind of suspected was coming, but the way it happens just blew Blew my effing mind. I can't say enough good things about Terry Silver. What an amazing villain this guy is. And he's not the only new addition I was really digging. The new kid characters, Kenny and Devin, are really cool too. I like Devin a lot. She might be one of my new favorites in the future. She needed more to do though. She shows up around mid-season when the All Valley adds a girls division, so Eagle Fang has to do some recruiting. And the way Johnny instantly takes a shine to her is just so charming and fun. But she doesn't really get a storyline beyond just being there and being her cool self. Kenny does get a storyline, and I do like Kenny as a character, but that plot was my one big sticking point about the season. I'll get to that in a minute. The new characters are great, though. Having said that, there is a drawback. As fun as these new faces are, this cast is getting very crowded. It was already a big cast, but then you add Terry Silver, Devin, Kenny, some characters from previous seasons come back, and it looks like it's gonna get even more crowded crowded next season, and I'm not sure how this is gonna work. Terry Silver is basically another lead character, and Kenny's plot is one of the bigger ones of the season, which means there's less real estate to go around for everyone else. Now, overall, I think the character work was really strong this time around, but because there are so many characters now, a lot of them are in a position where they have to do more with less. And they pull it off for the most part, but it did leave me wishing we'd had more time with these people, because what we did get was so good. Hell, the best storyline of the entire season is Tori's, and I never thought Tori was irredeemable or anything, but it wasn't until now that we saw how sympathetic and vulnerable her character is. She's not a bad person, she's just angry and defensive because life keeps backing her into a corner. And when Amanda LaRusso finds out about Tori's situation, their interaction was one of my favorite parts. It also had the added bonus of painting Sam in a less than favorable light, which I got a kick out of. I was Team Tori this season 100%. 
So that storyline was great. Then there's the stuff with Miguel and Robbie and their various father figures and the tension that causes. And those are some of the stronger elements of the season. But these things are able to be so good because they're given time. Unfortunately, not everything gets that time. Like, Hawk has one of the best storylines after Tori's, but it feels very abbreviated. At one point, he makes a big decision. I won't spoil it, but it really changes the landscape of Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fang, and then not much is actually done with it. There was a lot that could have been done with it, and I really thought would have been and should have been, but there just isn't enough time to do that. Same thing with Dimitri. There's stuff about him patching things up with Hawk and becoming more confident and a better fighter, and the story exists, but we see it in small pieces, a little bit here, a little bit there, and I enjoyed what we got, but like with Hawk's story, it needed more fleshing out. But at least those two get something, which is more than I can say for some people. Chris, Mitch, and Nate are glorified extras this season, which kind of sucks. Bert is a little bit luckier, but it's not like he's a major character either. And I wanted all these guys to get more to do, and I'm pretty sure that could have happened if it weren't for one thing. My one big gripe with this season that I think was the root cause of all these other issues. It's about the Kenny plot. Now, it's not his fault. Kenny is fine, but his storyline is also about Anthony. You know, the LaRusso's other kid, that little shit who would show up for two or three scenes every season, act like a dick and then disappear. Well, he has a much bigger role this time. His storyline with Kenny is one of the biggest ones, and Anthony has graduated from little shit to massive shit. Oh my god, I spent the entire season wanting someone, anyone, to kick this brat in the head so I wouldn't have to watch him anymore. There's nothing wrong with the actor, but I swear, Anthony the character was on my last nerve from minute one. Every time he appeared, I was wondering why we were wasting time on Anthony being an asshole to Kenny and his own parents when we could be fleshing out the stories for Hawk or Dimitri or Devin or doing anything with Mitch and Chris. I understand that Anthony being unlikable was the whole point, but Jesus Christ, Hawk was supposed to be unlikable in seasons two and three, but I still enjoyed him when he was on screen. But with the Anthony stuff, I just wanted to skip over every scene he was in. And on my rewatch, that's what I'll be doing. It is so irritating how much screen time he gets. No time for Mitch or Chris to get lines in this episode because we've got to cut back to Anthony being a dick. Devin does something cool, but no time to flesh out her character. Character, we've got to cut back to Anthony being a dick. Tori's trying to get her life back on track in the event that her mom doesn't live much longer, but screw that, we've got to cut back to Anthony being a dick! He seems to grow out of this by the end of the season, thank God, but holy shit, this character was a giant misfire. And it's not just that Anthony is so obnoxious that's the problem, it's that everything else in the show is so much better. And all the time we're spending on him is time we could be spending on those other things. I I saw what they were going for with this storyline, but man, this did not work for me at all. If the writers wanted to just ship Anthony off to boarding school or something in between seasons four and five so I don't have to put up with him anymore, that'd be just fine with me. So even though there is a big cast with a lot of new characters and some returning characters who make for some big surprises, I think there still would have been enough space for everybody to get their shit in if it weren't for that one story sucking up all the screen time. I loved every everything else, but I'm annoyed that it could have been even better if they'd spent that time on something other than Anthony. For example, I got really pumped by the first few minutes of the All Valley Tournament because we actually saw montages of everybody training for it, which we hadn't really gotten that much of prior to this. A lot of the season is devoted to the personal stuff, so most of the training was off screen. At one point, Johnny starts teaching Miguel this awesome new move, which Miguel does at the All Valley, but we never saw him practicing it. Dimitri does this great weapons routine for the skills competition, but we never saw him practicing it. I'm glad the characters' personal lives get attention, but I want to see the karate too. And it felt like that balance was a little off sometimes. Now, an episode that really nailed that balancing act was the prom episode, because we get to see where all the various couples are at in their relationships, but there's also fighting stuff too, which is great. And what this episode is able to do so well is give us a clear picture of what each relationship is going to be like, and in one case is even able to do this by using the fighting to illustrate that, showing which couple is on the same page and which one isn't. And the relationship 
Russian ships themselves are all over the map, but we get a good sense of where they all are, like Miguel and Sam. Is it me, or are these two just not a good couple? They've got the most buildup. Since the show started, it's been the slow burn to Miguel and Sam. Now they're finally together. And I know they're both dealing with stuff this season. Miguel's got his daddy issues. Sam's got her anger issues. So I didn't expect it to be smooth sailing or anything. But I'm just not feeling this. I don't see much chemistry between them. They don't seem to have fun together. It doesn't take much for them to start arguing. They don't even seem happy together a lot of the time. Compare that to Robbie and Tori, and it's night and day. Robbie and Tori are a great couple. I don't think I'm spoiling much by saying that. Those two just fit like a glove. They make sense together, they understand each other, and their chemistry just jumps off the screen. Reference the fight in this episode if you want proof. Then there's Hawk and Moon, which does get development this season, but it's one of the bigger victims of there not being enough screen time to go around, which hurts it because the last time we saw them interacting was when Hawk was still a bad guy, so we needed more context for what their dynamic is now. And finally, we've got Dimitri and Yasmin, who are kind of a hot, cringy man mess. Intentionally. Like, they're written to be a hot, cringy mess. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but again, it just, it, it needed more attention. It works, but we still don't know the why or how of it. Dimitri even admits at one point that he has no idea how this happened, and I was kind of thinking the same thing. It's also played for comedy, which felt a little bit weird in a season that was going for some of the biggest dramatic cuts the show has done so far. And that was some of the best stuff they did. There are scenes between Johnny and Miguel and Johnny and Robbie, you'll know which ones when you see them, that... If those scenes don't get you a little misty-eyed, I don't know what to tell you. And one of the biggest dramatic plot twists of the season, maybe even the whole series, comes from the absolute last character you would ever expect. And there are a lot of twists and turns in the All Valley too, which is what makes it so great. I thought I had a good idea of how the tournament would play out, but the writers threw so many curveballs here. Just on a superficial level, the All Valley made me wish there had been more fighting this season because it feels bigger and better than season one, and the kids have all leveled up, especially Dimitri. Homeboy really put himself on the board here, but the story of it is what makes it so compelling. The tournament comes down to two big fights, and I could not predict either of them. For the first one, I thought, well, you know, I don't see any way that character A doesn't win here, but character B kind of has to win for the story to work. On the other hand, I could see a scenario where character B loses, which would make the second fight not about the All Valley, but about a grudge match. And that would also make sense. So I had no idea what was going to happen. And the way it plays out felt very fitting. The winners made sense, but it's also bittersweet because afterward the plot twists just keep coming, and then that makes you think think and feel very differently about the outcome. It's really well done. And it sets the stage for a season five that is going to be very interesting. Certain characters are going in directions you might not have anticipated. We see new sides to people we thought we had figured out. Some of them might be starting to realize that they're on the wrong side. More characters from the movies could be showing up. This season did everything you would want it to do. The Anthony plot notwithstanding, it had twists and turns. Some of the best character work the show has done an awesome new villain, the All Valley kicked ass. There were a couple time management issues, but if that's the biggest complaint I have, then we made out pretty well here. And it was able to do all this while treating the Karate Kid lore in the fan base with care and respect, and holy shit, isn't it amazing what can happen when you do that? Cobra Kai just proved yet again why it's the gold standard for revivals, reboots, reimaginings, whatever, and it looks like the best is yet to come. Damn, I love this show. And the wait for season five is gonna really suck. But you know what? I'm happy to wait as long as it takes if it means we get another season as good as this one. Next time, just dial back on the Anthony stuff, sweep the leg on that little puke, focus more on the characters we actually like, and you'll be in good shape. Until then, I got a whole new season to rewatch. So I won't be getting much sleep for a while. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Let me know what you thought about Cobra Kai Season 4 in the comments. Ding that bell icon and follow my social media so you can always be notified when I upload new stuff. Links to all that into my live streaming channel are down below. Hit that thumbs up, share the video around, subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed, and I'll be back with more soon. So stay tuned for that, do all the YouTube things, and I'll see you next time.